Hey, what's up? I'm Al Cox. I play games, make games, and everything in between. And today, I'm going to give my six to eight month review after using Buildbox 3 for almost every day. The things I've learned, the difficulties when it comes to Buildbox crashing every day. And it still does, even with the latest beta version. But that's okay, because I've only gotten better. And if you're thinking about Buildbox 3, especially now that it's free, you better watch this video. Before I begin, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that little bell as I put out content playing all kinds of games and building games with Buildbox. If you have any suggestions of things you would like to see, please leave a comment below. I've been using Buildbox pretty much every other day for the last six to eight months. And when I was first getting started, oh man, that was super intimidating. I had previously been using Buildbox 2 for about two years and making a game in that was so much fun and super easy because unlike Buildbox 3, Buildbox 2 is literally no code and you can do a lot of cool things. Now you're stuck in the 2D environment, but that's okay. Now, if you want Buildbox 2, you do have to be a pro subscriber and ask Buildbox specifically for it. But today we're talking about Buildbox 3. Buildbox 3 initially was super intimidating, especially coming from Buildbox 2 where everything was in a 2D world and was pretty much straightforward with a small learning curve. Now, Buildbox 3 is a three-dimensional beast, literally, in terms of how the nodes are kind of the foundation and connect to everything throughout the game engine in terms of how you can have certain nodes affect characters, objects, and random things you wouldn't originally think. And you can even create your own custom nodes, go in and edit pre-written nodes. You do have to know how to use JavaScript for this, which for me is a little bit difficult, but I do have friends that I occasionally will sit down and spend hours trying to edit code, which may or may not succeed. That being said, the ability to go in and build stuff is pretty profound. I think when starting out, it's just very difficult to understand all the aspects, so it can be very frustrating if you keep at it. The funny thing is, is the parts that are most difficult for you to learn you'll keep hitting those walls and that's a good thing because eventually you'll figure out what and why something is working while you may not have been able to figure it out at the time of the issue understanding it moving forward is powerful this is just a game idea i made literally in under two minutes and it's when you press the screen the character expands this is not complicated this literally took me two minutes to do i understand how to create all the nodes and attach them together to get it to work the way I want. While I'm still working on the process of streamlining it to the App Store, I have just published a game on the Google Play Store, previously the App Store, so these are easy processes to get done, and they are integrated with AdMob. Overall, I'm excited to continue learning and building games. It's important to see it as a process. A lot of times, people are talking about the things that they want to make, which is great, but it's important to start small and start somewhere. Make a simple game, publish it, learn that process, and then you'll be on your way to becoming a better developer. Now, if you like this video and you wanna learn more about Buildbox, be sure to like and subscribe as I put out content. Leave a comment, let me know what you're working on, and I will see you next time. Peace.